our next speaker, uh, as we move on swiftly here through our, uh, through our four speakers, is uh, Chris Allen, who is the CEO from Red5 Pro. Chris, are you there? There you are. Yes. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Good to have you here. Now, now Chris, uh, you're going to do something a little different than uh, what we're doing um, with the other speakers, and you're going to do something interactive in a few minutes. Well, as well, well, as, we'll see how that goes. You know, hopefully well, the as viewers always. are not all clogged up, you know, as uh, Peter was saying there. So. Right. Well, I, I, I admire your, your, uh, your, your confidence <laughs> in doing a, a bit of an interactive demo in a bit. But, but Chris, uh, tell us a little bit about what Rev, uh, who Red5 Pro is, what you do, and I know you've got a few, few slides you'd like to show, so feel free to to, to take it away before we get to your demo and some questions. Yeah, why don't I just do that? Uh, let me share my screen here and get right to it. So yeah, to provide some context of what we're doing, um, we're, well, this thing's jumping around crazy. Uh, we're RedFi Pro. Um, we focus on live, real-time video streaming. Um, and, you know, the biggest problem in the industry for live streaming at the moment, um, at least when you care about any kind of interactivity in the stream, is uh, the latency, and that's you know measured from the time it's shot, you know, to somebody seeing it on the other end. And um, the you know the solutions that solve for this tend to be high latency, measured in seconds, and the ones like what we're doing with Zoom tend to not scale um, to you know millions of concurrent viewers. And so what we're doing is really coming up with a way of solving for the latency by using um, kind of what is usually a point-to-point -point video communication protocol, mostly WebRTC in our case, and then scaling that uh, to millions of concurrent viewers. And we use cloud networks to do that, which I can get into in just a bit. The, the, the typical approach that people are taking to lowering the latency in live streams is kind of using an uh, HTTP-based uh, solution because it, you know it's in many ways, this is almost like um, you know trying to improve the existing HTTP protocols and do things like chunk transfer, LLHLS. Um, the advantages of this is you can use the current infrastructure and you're up and running and ready to go. The problem is even with this uh, optimization, you're looking at two or three seconds of latency. Um, in, our, in our situation, we're using WebRTC for the delivery, which gets us in very low latencies, anywhere from 100 50 milliseconds up to about 500 milliseconds. Um, and, you know, it's UDP based. There's a lot of huge advantages here. The only bad thing about this is we can't just use CDNs to deliver the video. We actually had to come up with a completely unique way of doing this. And um, this kind of leads us to the, the thing that people will usually tell you is that WebRTC doesn't scale. And that's absolutely true if you kind of look at it from a, um, a traditional standpoint. It was originally built as a peer-to-peer -peer protocol, which inherently doesn't scale well. Um, but what we do is we use cloud instances. And as you can see in this diagram, we've got origin instances. So these are like um, on AWS, they'd be EC2 instances. The incoming streams go into origins. Uh, they get fanned out to edges, and then subscribers are connecting to those edges. And then to get uh, massive concurrency, we put relays in the middle, which allows extra capacity and what an origin would be able to handle on its own. And this is how you can get millions of concurrent viewers using cloud. Um, and the, the brains of the operations is this thing called the stream manager, which is routing the streams. Broadcasters connect to it and get assigned an origin. Subscribers connect to it and get assigned an edge to subscribe to that stream. And it, it takes care of uh, auto scaling. It, uh, it can move up and down and add instances as needed depending on the load. And we also have a unique approach to ABR. Um, our system will actually re react and send the correct data down based on uh, this RAMB message, which is happening over the WebRTC protocol. Um, and probably more interesting is that we can actually leverage multiple cloud systems to get a really in, a nice global coverage. Um, so if one cloud provider is not gonna cover the regions you're looking to hit, then you can mix and match them. And we, and we do this uh, using Terraform, uh, which is kind of this general API that allows you to tap into just about any cloud network, which also includes private uh, networks. Uh, so you can have your private cloud connecting to your public cloud for excess capacity and everything else. So um, without further ado, let me let's see if I can show you guys a quick demo. I've got this running already. Uh, 
kind of a 1080p stream coming out of my laptop here and then I'm subscribing to it on the other end. And you can see that's really low latency uh, stream. But let's see if the rest of you guys out there in the world can see this. Um, now, where the heck did the chat go in? Chris, as you're doing that, I will just say to anyone in the audience, if your screen went to full screen view and you lost the chat window, you can go up to view options at the top of your screen and scroll down to um, exit full screen. And that should bring your chat window back because Chris is going to share a link with us all in, uh, in just a yeah. moment. Hopefully that went out. Did you guys all get that? I'm seeing it here. Oh, excellent. Yeah, so that's it. And then, you know, just to prove that it does work on iOS because people are usually like, oh, yeah, um, it's not, it doesn't work on iOS anymore. Let's just see it running on my little iPhone here. Let's see. Oh, there we go. Ooh, so exciting. Um, and, you know, the cool thing is you can also publish from iPhones and Android devices. And we have a mobile SDK and everything else. But, you know, um, I'll leave this up and going for the, uh, for a little bit here and yeah, maybe I can take some questions. Um, I know Eric, we wanted to talk a bit about how this technology is being used today, especially with the COVID situation. You know, we're, we're insanely busy and it's uh, pretty exciting. Uh, stuff. Yeah, abs doing. absolutely. Real quick. And I may have missed it. Um, uh, from where is that stream? Where, where did that stream originate? And where is it going before it ends up on, on people's screens? Oh, that's a great question. So this this stream here is going out to uh, a digital ocean instance. So I'm publishing using WebRTC, which is part of our SDK. You can do this stuff, um, but then it's going, it's hitting uh, uh, New York uh, region in digital ocean, and then we're probably subscribing to a stream, uh, um, the digital ocean edge right now as well. Um, so it's just kind of a round trip. I'm getting, I don't know, I would say well way under a couple hundred milliseconds right mm -hmm. now uh, with this particular feed right now. Um, yeah, and it, attendees are commenting that, you know, the sync is only off by a few frames between the two. So, um, yeah. so, th so that's pretty impressive. But let's talk a little bit about how, uh, how COVID-19 has impacted your business and, and what sort of use cases you're finding are especially um, rising to the top now. Yeah, I mean, it's it's really across the board. I mean, everybody being stuck at home has created this interesting situation where this is basically the only way to connect with people outside, right? Mm -hmm. And so the, the kind of uh, streaming, you know, passive experiences, everybody's looking for more interactivity with the streams. Um, and this goes everything from live education uh, to teaching, you know, they, they want this extra bit where it's not just the professor broadcasting out to the students. Um, and so now we're seeing whiteboarding applications in education. We're also seeing in an entertainment space, uh, lots of these kind of groups are doing live concerts, uh, and live DJs, kind of at home dance parties. And those are pretty interesting too, because they want to have that kind of connectivity with the other people. Uh, we haven't quite figured out how to get the latency low enough so the musicians can actually play it directly together, but that right. is we're kind of playing around with at the moment. Um, and then, you know, live sports, I think are going to be completely different because of this. Um, you know, we're seeing, you know, we already had the, uh, the sports betting use case, like where people were trying to figure this out and then getting the latency as low as possible, getting rid of spoilers and everything else. But now when you're not able to go to the stadium and everything else, you know, the people are craving this much more interactive thing where they can talk with other people. I think eSports has really driven a lot of the innovation in this space because right. you know, they've had this ongoing chat that goes with the videos, they've got interactivity, um, you know, just because it's video games in general, but I think traditional sports is getting there as well. Um, yeah. Right, so, so you're anticipating, I mean, not anticipating, you're seeing that, that, that the, the people who are responsible for live sports programming are spending a lot of time right now figuring out how to apply this once once the teams and the fans get back into the stadiums as well, right? Exactly. Unfortunately, I can't dive into details and specifics sure. with, with what, what's happening, but it, it is kind of insane. Um, and the, I think the experiences are going to stick around way, way past this pandemic. Um, 
I, I think that's, you know, it, as unfortunate as the situation really is, and it, it is terrible for everyone and, and lots of people losing, losing their jobs, but I think the future um, is going to be quite interesting. Um, and I, I think the impact of this is going to be long lasting and particularly on live video streaming. Yeah, I mean, would you agree with what, with what Peter said earlier, which is that uh, this crisis has just sped up a lot of innovation that was already in the works or do you think it's Absolutely. also spurred new innovation that, that might not have happened otherwise? It's, um, I, I think it's a bit of both actually. Okay. Um, we certainly were busy before this started and people were looking at how do you create interactive, huge scale um, streaming experiences. But now people are like, we need this now. <laughs> this is, right. you know, it was like one of those things where it was on the roadmap at one point and now they're like, oh, what? we're pushing everything else off and now we're getting right to this. Uh, right, right. We do have a question uh, from the audience. And again, if you do have a question, please put it in the Q&A tab. Uh, sure. Derek Freeman is asking, how do your server plans work for Red5 Pro? Do content providers install software on their servers? Yeah, exactly. So the content, content providers just deploy on their own cloud network or multiple cloud networks, as I was pointing out. And then uh, our licensing basically tallies up the total number of nodes uh, running during the month, and then we, we charge you accordingly. So it's, it's a bit of a different model than the kind of hosted platform as a service kind of model or, or the CDN model. Uh, right. Although I will say we are working on something uh, that, that will be released soon that kind of covers that as well. Okay. Uh, we've got one more question. Uh, you did mention scale a little bit, but you knew it was going to come up again. Um, what is the scale of this solution since WebRTC has in the past been limited? Is there a maximum audience size? Yeah, I mean, this kind of gets down to the number of cloud instances you can throw at it um, is really where we're at now. Um, so, you know, I can tell you this, AWS has a ton of them. So does Azure, um, mm -hmm. DigitalOcean and Groups, and, and since you can go across all of them, I don't really think there's a true limit to it. Um, and we've been running some massive scale tests, and there's going to be some large scale uh, Music concerts coming out soon. They are going to be really pushing the limits of our technology. Um, so millions, I guess, is the right answer. You know, can we stream the Olympics with this? I would be a bit nervous about it, but I think okay. we can probably pull it off. You know. All right. All right. Well, good. Uh, good answer. Great information. Um, certainly. Oh, uh, one last question, which we have about thirty seconds for. Um, what is the latency critical link for is it, for example, is it camera to cloud that goes a bit beyond the scope of red five pro but as you see it, what is the latency critical link. Yeah, I mean you, you certainly have an overhead of the Internet right, which is, uh, you know, it's kind of unavoidable and, and, and as Peter was already pointing out there are ways to kind of deal with that too. Um, but, I mean, it, it's. It tends to be at the encode side, so you got to have a fast encoder. Um, it also happens to do with you know decoding. So there's there's all these different points along the ways, and then the media server implementation, which in this case is Red Five, you know needs to be super fast. Um, we also, as I was pointing out in that uh, diagram with the ADR, uh, the transcoder piece also has to be uh, wicked fast to be able to generate all those um, uh, variants in real time. Um, so I would say each of those are a bottleneck, but you know, like that we've been really striving to get everything to uh, go as quick as, uh, as possible. Terrific. That wraps up uh, the time we have for Red 5 Pro. I think there's another question, but we'll make sure that Chris gets that offline afterwards. Uh, if you see me looking uh, down during our discussions, it's because I'm checking my watch. That's perfect. And if anybody has specific questions they want to email us directly, just hit us at info at red5pro.com or, or on our site. You'll find us. So thank you so All much. Right. I appreciate it, Eric. Thank you very much, Chris.